Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's take a look at some C sharp coding. So there is this kind of perception in video game development that coding is incredibly difficult. And I personally don't think it is because it's all about understanding the logic and flow of the code. If you take the time to actually think about what you're coding, how you can put it together, build small, then build big, it makes so much more sense. So to create a script, it's as simple as right clicking, create and C sharp script. And it's important what we call this script. We have to make a note of what we call it just in case we need to change anything in the future. I'm going to call this JV script. Nice and simple. And then we'll open it up in a program called Visual Studio. Now you can use Mono Develop if you have that or any other editing software. Usually I like to go for Visual Studio because it's simple and straight to the point. Now remember I said earlier we have to remember the name of the script. Here we have the public class as JV script. The class has to be the exact same as the script name itself. It has to be otherwise the script will not work. So keeping that in mind we've skipped ahead because we've missed three lines of code up here. What are these up here? These up here are the namespace. This is where we can declare within the script certain items we could call them that the script would need to use for example if we were dealing with ai elements we would need to have uh, using unity engine.ai if we were using um, gui elements we'd have using unity engine.ui it's just a way of the script recognizing where it needs to pull information from for the public class so as i said the public class this is where all of our actions happen where we declare things and where we code so everything we write is usually going to be within this public class these things here are called methods so void start void update these are methods and this is where all the actions are performed within the script so if you need the script to do something they're done within a method these right here are annotations these green lines these aren't lines of code which are executed. These are just notes, a way of making quick and simple notes of what different things do. These, the parentheses here, open close bracket, these are used to contain information. For example, if we need to have an extra variable, as it were, like for a collider, for example, then we would have it in here, which references inside that method. Speaking of variables, we can declare variables after the public class up here or with inside the method it doesn't really matter too much but if you declare a variable inside the method only that method could use it so if we had a variable inside void start we couldn't use it inside void update we'd have to have it inside the public class curly brackets these are what contain the code itself so methods always start with an open curly bracket and finish with a closed curly bracket and like i say all of the bits of code go inside so let's write some code to actually do something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the void update method and these two annotations in green because we're not going to use them right now. We may as well not have code in there that we're not going to use. So let's declare a variable. Now, when declaring a variable, it doesn't matter whether you have the word public or not at the beginning. I like to have public because I like to see my variables within the inspector panel within the Unity engine, but we'll see that as we get further on anyway. So firstly, let's go public, and then we need to declare the type of variable. So let's start with just a simple game object. And a game object can refer to absolutely any object that is in the hierarchy inside the Unity engine. Now this is where we call it something whatever we want so we're going to call this the axe and now we finish the line with a semicolon why do we do that it's a way of the script realizing that that is the end of the line there is no further code after that semicolon so therefore we can then move to the next line of code speaking of the next line of code let's have a different variable let's have a float so public float now you'll probably notice at this point things have started highlighting differently generally you can see if you hover over why they're highlighted they mean different things but as long as they're not underlined like this right here then it's generally good you've done the right thing so what is a float exactly 
A float is a decimal number. It's not a whole number, but it can be a whole number. So a float can be 1, it can be 1.2, it can be 1.3, it can be 1.4, or any number really. So I'm going to call this my number, semicolon. You've probably noticed at this point why some things are capitalized and some aren't. Well, that's just the way the script is used and just the way Unity recognizes, or rather the code is actually used like this. If we were to have this as lowercase g, this wouldn't work. It has to be an uppercase G. So just keep an eye on your capitalization when scripting, it is important. So next, let's have an integer. What is an integer? We can define that by INT. An integer is a whole number and it cannot be a decimal number. It can only ever be a whole number. Like I said, a float can be a decimal, but it also can be a whole number. But an integer, only a whole number. So let's have this called my integer and a semicolon because we've ended that line and next let's have one more variable and let's have this a true or false possibility so this variable can only have two outcomes a true or false and that is known as a bool so public and let's have bool lowercase b and let's just call this true or false and then semicolon because we've ended it right there now let's create a few lines of code to see how these scripts work nicely. So within this void star method, let's make the axe appear on screen. So I'm going to go back to Unity and I'm going to click this axe and I'm going to turn it off. So when we press play, this axe won't appear, but we're going to have this script make it appear as if by magic. And to do that, we can use something real simple. And if you're using uh, Visual Studio, you'll be able to see that it's kind of predicting what you're going to do and it makes things a lot easier. So if we type the ax, because that's the one we want to deal with, you can see here it's given you what it thinks you're trying to do, which, yep, yeah, that's fine. Next, we need to have dot because we need to do the next action. And the next action is going to be to set active. So if we type set active, you'll see it's done it right there and we can just have it do that nice and simple now the next thing we have to do is inside the curly bracket sorry not curly brackets the normal brackets the parentheses and we can either give a true or false and you'll see the little note here is giving saying a bool value remember bool is true or false so we can either set this as true or false within these brackets and what should we do let's have it set active as true simply because it's off and we want to turn it on so close bracket and semicolon. Remember, that is the end of that line of code. So we can move on to the next line. At this point, let's set that float to a random number. So my uh, number equals, and let's make it equal to 1.7, because why not? Now you'll notice at this point, we can't have 1.7 semicolon because it still underlines, it says it's wrong. In C Sharp, we always have to put an F after any decimal number, so as it recognizes that it is a decimal number. It's just one of the little quirks that you eventually get used to, so don't worry if it confuses you right now. You just have to remember that, yep, that's all there is to it. Next, let's set the integer to 6. So, my uh, integer, and you'll see it's already predicted it for us, equals 6, semicolon. It's as simple as that. And finally, let's set our bool as true. I think by default, it's probably going to be false, but we'll see. So true or false, you can see it's right there. So we can hit return on that and we'll put equals true, semicolon, and then save the script. So hold control, press S or go to file and save. So what now? Well, let's head back into Unity. We've written the script, but how do we actually apply this script to this scene? It can be done very, very easily. I'm going to go to game object and click on create empty. Just create an empty game object. Now this script can be attached to this game object nice and easy. And you'll see over here, we now have this as a component within the object and we can see the four variables that we created. That's why we use the word public. So we can physically see them right here. So the axe says non game object. My number and my integer, right there, 
and the true or false is dictated by a tick box or a blank box. So what we can do now, the axe, we need to define this axe right there. Just a case of drag and dropping from the hierarchy that object over here and there we go. So when we press play now, the axe will appear. My number will go to 1.7. My integer will change to 6 and this will become ticked because that's what we've told the game to do in our script. There we go. And the axe is right there. Simple as that. So that is the basics of how you can actually code in Unity and building small like this and building up from that really makes the difference. Don't try and start building massive scripts if you've got absolutely no experience with coding whatsoever. Start small like this. Build your way up. Have that goal. There'll be more coding tutorials on my channel. There's literally hundreds of tutorials that I have with coding on there and I recommend checking them out because you could learn something new, something you didn't know previously. So guys, hit subscribe, click the bell icon and you too can stay up to date with all of that content. Guys, Thank you very much for watching.